popping. So in the bunker, good times. Thanks for subscribing. Make sure you hit that notification bell. Most TMPers do not do that, and they always act like they don't know when I post a video. Uh, sorry, YouTube's notification system is not great. It sucks ass. Yeah. Yeah, so, it's bad. But, so, I mean, there are a lot of times we see stuff where they go, hey, when will you review the M1A? When will you do the M1 Grand, even? When I've are you going to review the Ruger 1022, nothing fancy? Stuff that, like, we've done and released and even... I don't know, 2008 I did it? Yeah, 2008, eight, nine. coming up on 10 years of the project. It's I, I know it's tough. Sometimes it, it may slip your mind, but... It's kind of handy when you go, hey, where is it? And then you find it right off the bat. Exactly. So, also, if you ever have an, uh, a question, whether I have or we have reviewed something, just go into Lug uh, the Google search line or better yet, YouTube search line, type out nothing fancy, the name of the gun. And chances are we've reviewed it. I have over 2,000 videos now in the nothing fancy project. This is officially year 12. All right, show them what you got. Show them what you got. This one, first one. We went on a hunt for some AR-15 pistols. I have at this point reviewed the Palmetto 10.5 AR-15 pistol, both in complete form and in kit form. Uh, and that was from Gunny's, the Great American Gun Store. Thank you very much. Although we bought that one. Thank you. And it's gonna be a long-term cast member. Uh, it shot very well and it opened my mind a little bit. Okay, because I have been somewhat anti-AR-15 pistol over the past few years. I'm not gonna lie about it. You're gonna hear that come out again in the philosophy of use discussion. You're gonna see why when we talk about first cool, that is applicability and capability. Uh, we went on a hunt and this is what we got right here. It's actually a Delton Lima is the name of it, AR-15 pistol. And believe it or not, we got a seven and a half inch barrel. <laughs> Show it to him, brother. <laughs> what? We will track this SBA3. So look at how short this thing is. I mean, this is amazing. Tiny. Yeah, this is so compact. And actually, uh, I bought this one and then Tactical Doodle bought his. So there's his right here. It does have a couple mods on it. It did not come like this. We're gonna show you how it came in stock form. We'll talk to that, trust me. We'll tell you what our opinions are on the stock furniture and components and features that it comes with. Um, just super quick, this has a Gym Tech Halo GMT A2 compatible suppressor on it, and I got to tell you, it freaking rocked. That's awesome. I did a suppressor review on the Barricade about a month ago, posted in Patreon, and you guys can go check that out. And I talked about it, and it sounds like the guys in Patreon def definitely want me to review this. Uh, initial review is it's amazing. Uh, I'm not a big fan of A2 cages. They don't do much, but if you just have a GMT with you or any other suppressor, they're all pretty good. You can just put it on QD. It's awesome. That was pretty handy being able to slap it right on there. No dicking around. No friend stuff. Seeing if we have shims. Yeah, I, I was going to go component, component, but we'll get to that in features. Okay, so now uh, this will be actually the first AR-15 review that I've done. Right? You were with me in shot when we did a booth review with Delton, the guys way back when, I think it was like 2012, were super cool. We liked their guns. It seems like back then there was a lot of talk about the Delton brand. They were relatively new in market, weren't they? Yeah, I think it was their first or second year out and they described some of the <clears throat> growing pains they had to do as they were making a name for themselves in the industry. Uh, now, I haven't really been keeping up on the brand. I don't know what all the variations they're doing and producing. I can't tell you. But I assume it's just like everybody else. You're going to have M4 type rifles. You're going to have 18 inch style competitive three gun, gun, three gun rifles, maybe SPR types, and then maybe a couple 20s thrown in there too. Okay, so uh, we're, I'm not, we're not really going to go all, all over their, uh, their AR rifles. You can go to their website and check it out. Okay, but the one we concentrate on because... We, st we did the starter drug of the Palmetto, the 10 and a half, we got the seven and a half Lima. On to philosophy of use. What in the heck do you use this thing for? Hmm, that is a very interesting question. I would say first and foremost, just for fun. A recreational gun, right TD? Totally. You just go out, you put your can on it, maybe you don't run a can, I'll talk about that and you just shoot it for fun. It gives you a second cool vibe, you know, cause it's so small. Tiny. It, it looks like a sub gun, really. This is TD's, of course. I mean, look at this thing. It is so cool. And so for whatever reason, small, short overall tactical carbines, this is, that is not a carbine, it's a pistol. They just really turn guys on. 
They just love it. So that's the first thing, recreation and fun. How about without rule of law, primary defensive weapon, would I choose it? I will say this, um, and this is gonna drive to my criticism of the gun. Maybe, maybe. I think it's a slot receiver. I think there's uh, certain things that it can do very well. And in my book, when engagement distances are pretty close, the confines are pretty compact. Yeah. That's when I would say it's a really good choice. The, the issue I have and have had with AR-15 pistols or for whatever short barrel rifle you want to, uh, or pistol you want to come up with, including the Draco, by the way. Yeah. Would you have the Draco? No, I, I... It's been riding in the background for a couple of videos, but we've shown it a lot. And the Draco is amazing. I can roll in some footage. Uh, but man, is that thing loud. It's so loud. So that's my first criticism. It's going to blow your freaking eardrums out. Okay, and I have like hearing issues sometimes on my left side and I got to be really careful and so shooting a short barreled pistol or even rifle for me is usually a bad call. That's the first thing. Secondly, I think you're going to have diminished ballistic performance. I don't think, I know, because we chrono this sucker right here and just as a ballpark, we were getting 2200 feet, actually 2250 feet per second. Now out of a 16 inch uh, Bushmaster, this gun right here, lightweight enhanced barrel. Uh, PMC, which isn't a, a particularly hot load, PMC is freaking 2825. Now I gotta tell you, that is a big, big difference in velocity, right? So you're giving up 625 feet per second. And I, again, these are ballpark ballistic figures to go with a seven and a half inch pistol. And you're gonna be giving some up with a 10 and a half too. Every time you cut barrel off, um, you're gonna get that. So um, what I'm saying is we're gonna say some negative things and then we're gonna dig out of the hole and say some good things. But I gotta lay all this stuff out with a philosophy of use discussion so you know what you're getting into. A lot of people, and actually I think even on the Wikipedia page on the 5.56, it'll say the terminal fragmentation velocity for uh, the 5.56 is about 2,500 feet per second. So you're launching at muzzle less than that. Now, on uh, out of a 16 inch, and I don't know what you're shooting in 193 or whichever load. You, I mean, again, you're coming out a lot faster than that. You're 28, 25, and that was standard. And we've had hotter loads. Like if you shoot in 193 loads, they're gonna be hotter. Not as accurate, but hotter. There you go. So decide whether that's good for you. <clears throat> Another thing is increased wear. I think pistol uh, direct gas impingement systems. You know, they're their own creature. I think it's a lot of wear and tear in the bolt carrier group. Um, does it really matter in the realm of civilian use? I think in a way, <clears throat> as a crazy person, that's kind of cool. I would be pretty happy with myself if I managed to wear out a part of my AR from shooting it too much. Well, that's the thing. How many guys are actually going to shoot their ARs to that point? Not many. Yep. And that's something we drive home in a lot of our GRVs is guys act like they're shooting cases of ammunition per year and that's really not the case. So, getting back to my point, they wear quicker, yes. Will you wear it out in your shooting? Um, probably not, and I don't know of anyone that's competing with an AR pistol, do yeah. you? Maybe I, I'm, I'm oblivious, but who's running a seven and a half or even a 10 and a half AR pistol? That's Minimum would thing. be 16 inch, maybe some 14 and a halfs out there. Anyone who goes through that volume of fire to burn through it would probably go up market for an AR. They'd probably be with like oh, annual defense or they're something. They're building their own. Yeah. They're building their own. And so while we're showing you these Delton Lima pistols, we're gonna be taking you out in the desert, also in the indoor range where we shot these guns a lot. So philosophy of use, downsides are, again, uh, reduced ballistic not. performance, incredible blast and noise and concussion, increased wear. Okay, now on to the good super compact form factor. So this is something you can throw in a lot of different carry cases as a law enforcement officer, as a responsible civilian sheepdog, and uh, carry it. And there's something to be said for that. So what's my weight on this one? Did I write a weight? On that one. Get yeah. the scale. <coughs> here it is right here. Now these are not super lightweight because I'm running the can on this and that's going to add a lot of weight. Um, and I will talk about that, promise you. Stock is 4. What's your 8, guess? I'm going to say 6-ish with a can on there. 611. So yeah, it's not super light. This is 611. Where, where yours. Now, TD's does not have a suppressor on it. 
He's running a muzzle can from a Palmetto, actually, so this is not a Delton one. Yeah. Both of the Lima pistols come with an A2 birdcage. I did mention that. What's your weight on it? 6.7. 6 pounds, 7 yeah, ounces, six or 6.7? 6 pounds, 7 ounces. How would the chef say that? 6 pounds, 7 ounces with the, <laughs> the Palmetto flash hider. <laughs> I do. I mean, I, I had the A2 on there for a while, but I got kind of sick of it. I couldn't resist okay. modding it. Uh, we were going to talk about the upsides. Let me backtrack just a little bit since we were talking about muzzle devices. With a seven and a half inch pistol, and I think I said this in the bunker solo bunker review of the Palmetto ten and a half. Um, I, I'm really reticent to go to a seven and a half inch barrel for that reason. Forget everything else, just a blast and recoil. Honestly, for me, I'm not going to run it without a suppressor. There's no way. It's too darn loud. Okay, and so getting back, would I shoot this with an A2? Not unless I had no choice, no choice at all. So and then that gets back to his choice of this. This is somewhat of a mus or a sound for directing muzzle device. You need to, in my opinion, our opinion, run at least that for your ears. Don't have anybody standing near you. Uh, I would. Honestly, if you go to an indoor range and you shoot an AR-15 pistol, you should go into the lanes next to you and give them a heads up. Say, guys, I'm shooting center fire short barrel. That's all you need to say. And guys, I would really appreciate that if you told me because I know it's getting, it's going to get really, really loud. Because we've been in the lane when guys have done that and they never give the heads up. Next thing you know, it's like even double ears aren't enough. Am I exaggerating? Yeah, the last range trip we did when we were on the line, there was a, a I think, Taiwanese couple in the lane next to us oh and they, goodness, they that was a disaster. They didn't really have any experience shooting and the guy next to them had rented it sounded like one of the full auto little M4 shorties or something because mm -hmm. those poor people had no ears on. They kept taking them off in order to talk to each other so they uh, popped them off and right as the guy went <clears throat> They may have gotten permanent hearing damage is our point. Oof. So can up uh, hopefully you live in a state where you can buy a suppressor and put it on. Hopefully you have one. I know they're a headache to get. They're a $200 tax stamp, the weight. A lot of you guys watching this video can't even own such a gun. I'm sorry. Don't know what to tell you. But us in free states, as of now, all subject to change, uh, you can own them. And it's really cool with the brace and the relaxation of the brace use. It, it really makes it a handy overall package. So can up. Now for the good sights. We talked about how compact. Not super lightweight. I mean, I know guys putting together sub five pound 16 inch ARs when they really, really watch all the ounces and they have a lightweight bolt carrier and all that stuff. But with a cam, that's doable, you know? And if we, this is a heavy optic. So this is an ACO, isn't it? I forget. That's a uh, aim point on there. So that's not super light. I think it's around, I want to say 10 ounces. You put, you'd save six ounces if you went to a hollow sun. This yeah. is a 503C. So you could shave weight with that. And I could shave weight on. That, Take your BUIS off. That's, well, that's a Troy battle sight too, so that's way heavier. So that's a, just about 3.8 ounces yeah. for, oh, you have like embus on the front, yep. don't you? So he's got kind of a mixed mashed uh, embus, because that's what we have in stock. Matching's for rich people. <laughs> hey, he loves mixed mash stuff. He loves it. And honestly, I could shave weight with that. So you're talking about, if you really watch it, five and a half pounds. Yeah. Um, and that makes it very transportable and very concealable if and when your mission needs that. Now, let's, and I, again, I told you 45 minutes for this review. We could just rip through all the features and all the other stuff. Uh, go to the website of the manufacturer if you want that. You can do it yeah. in 30 seconds. And if I remember right, Delton sometimes has deals on their site. Just saying. Yeah. Uh, should we tell them what we paid for this? I think we should. We probably should. All right. $400. $400. We got it at Gallinson's Gun Store, downtown Salt Lake City. $400. $399. And that's doable. Because last, about a month ago when I was price checking, there was <clears> another <throat> store online selling them for just about that. It was like $389 or some <clears throat> crazy price. That's a ton of gun for that price. Ton of gun. Hood. Now remember, we're looking at some modified Lima pistols here. So yeah. this, they did not come like this. It, pretty much everything else you're seeing besides the frame We've added. So this is the AR-15 pistol buffer it comes with. It is basic. Show it to them close. There isn't really too much you can do with that. And if you swap to a brace, make sure you pay attention to sizing and use what the brace manufacturer recommends because this has that little pistol hump, which makes it a little bit tougher if you're looking to just slide on a, God, a stock like thing. this one. 
Does a Swedish chef like that one? It is absolutely terrible. <laughs> it is entirely too heavy, and it is flimsy to boot. And in hot weather, it rotates so constantly. Unless you glue it onto the the buffer tube, it's going to rotate on you. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Uh, speaking from loss of experience. Now, I think we did shoot this with this stock. The footage you're going to see is with one of these because we didn't have the SBA 3s. We had to mail order them and wait for them to come. Yeah, we pay for them just like you do. And it took a while. And uh, but So in the bunker, you're having it. We we're really lamenting the fact that the footage you're watching is not running yeah. the SB Tactical SBA 3s, which is our go-to most favored pistol brace right now. Here's another complete look at Tactical Doodles Delton Lima AR-15 pistol. Look at the different colorations of tan. <laughs> Someone out there is looking at that like, oh, I just can't deal with it. My OCD cannot take it, nothing fancy. TD's always been that way. Yeah. He loves the different colors. He likes uh, mixing it up. He just does. Is it from your, I don't know, Star Wars plane days? when he looked at uh, Boba Fett Slave 1. Yeah, just a little bit. His armor was way cool. Like, he didn't have any matching colors. No, he just had a pair of cargo pants, a jetpack, and a really cool looking helmet. He really didn't care about color coordination at all. Unlike his pansy ass dad. <laughs> hey, you're talking about blue, me again. Polished silver, matching, it was. You know, uh, I can do this too. I can do the mixed colorations. I'm not yeah. like OCD about it, but. Um, I actually, I'm 50-50 at this point. I don't really care because to actually match everything up is a lot of work and expense. Yeah. And I just don't care anymore. So Delton, of course, is not the only AR-15 pistol around. There's a lot of good factory produced options for you. Yeah. And I think that's what most of the guys watching this video are going to be looking at is a factory produced AR-15 pistol, especially if you can get it for $400. What? I mean, when I saw the price tag on that, I was like going, there's something wrong here. Yeah. There's something, there, are these like returns? Are these seconds? Are these used guns? And I talked to the dudes at the counter. I talked to Tim there at Gallinson's. He's like, nope, they're brand new. They're a lot more on the website. I dialed it up on the website. They're not a lot more. It's yeah. a really high value AR, 7.5 inch AR-15 pistol. According to Delton, I think they're like 879 or something. No, they're not MSRP. that much. I looked, the MRCRP is not that high. It's you not. Know, Street it, price is about I, 500. I want to say like 200 more, like 600 and something, which is still, it's like, oh, that's not yeah, horrible. Yeah, it's not a bad deal. So it's not just Delton, some other options. We're kind of jumping ahead to competitive yeah. options. But this is a good place to put it before we jump into features. Uh, how about, we were at Gunny's, associated with that fancy project. Great American Gun Store, thanks right to Wyatt and Dude, company. And we saw the Saint AR-15 pistol, yeah. and it was only $275. Psych, it wasn't $275. What was the real price? It's about $850. $850, which, let's be honest, is not outrageous. Yeah. I mean, the only reason it seems outrageous is because we're talking about a $400, $400 AR pistol here, which is incredible value. Um, another option would be ATI. ATI, ATI has the hybrid Omni or something. That's about five hundred. Palmetto, of course, and I have a Palmetto up here. I'm going to show up here. I'm going to show you here in a second. Pretty much all the brands. So the, there's not a ton of difference when you're looking for an AR pistol aside from the rails, maybe a brace coming with it, the barrel length, the quality of the components, like what's inside the bolt carrier, the bolt. All that's important to these guys. It's important to me. Um, Let's show you actually this one right here. So your one option, of course, is like I was saying, getting a ready-made AR-15 pistol. I think that's going to save you time. I think most of you all will buy either a bunch of parts to roll your own or buy a basic gun and then tend to modify it and then you get busy and it never happens. Yeah. Do we know people like that? Tons. Tons of people. But you can roll your own. I think it's cool. It's an easy way to do it. Um, this is an AR lower right here. And this is a Palmetto 10 and a half upper, the one I just reviewed. This is running a Kinetitech, 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 however you say that, sound Ford muzzle device and everything else is just as it comes from the factory, unmodified. The whole thing is, oh, except I, I guess that's a uh, BCM charging handle, whatever. So again, it's so easy to push pin this into place and then you have an entirely new gun. And uh, it's, that's another advantage of the modular AR-15 system. I mean, here you go. So this is, a, this is my preferred pistol size, to be honest with you guys. 10 and a half inch. It's going to have a little bit more velocity, a tiny bit less concussion and blast. 
Look at how quick that is though. And then it's run an SBA3 brace as well. As, as we said, this is like our favorite. That's a really good, a really good setup. This by the way is an Aero Precision lower, which is, dang it, it's a little bit heavier than the other ones. Yeah, but man, the <clears> price <throat> is right on it. It was affordable, it has an integrated trigger guard. Uh, and then I think I, did I put the POF trigger in this yet or no? I don't think I don't, so. It's just a factory trigger, unmodified. There you go. So that's a competitive option. Here's a Palmetto of sorts. Um, and there's a ton more. Let's get into features. Did you want to say anything right now? Um, not yet. Let me, let me tell you this. So we talked about the pistol brace and we talked about how this came with it. And we also talked about and bragged about the amazing $400 price, but they're basically saving a, I would say their cost 50 bucks, your cost about 120 bucks by putting this on. And you're gonna to have to swap it out. Like we said, you're either gonna put a big fat rubber brace on it or you're gonna go out and spring for this, which is running around 115 bucks. So go ahead and add that to the price. Yeah. So if we're being honest, to put a decent brace on this, you're looking at $515 AR. Am I, I right or wrong? And that's with no other mods at all. I'd happily take it that way. That way you can choose your favorite brace. Nothing sucks quite as much as spending money and getting something nice like the M85 that the Sentry was. Mm -hmm. When we got that, we were like, yeah, God, it's got the brace on it, but it was like a pound and just solid 20 rubber. ounces. These are 20 ounces. Uh, this one's a little bit lighter, but the one we ran on the Mini Draco, it's 20 ounces. Yeah. And the rot rotational problems as well. So features, if we're talking about stock, this is what you're dealing with. So you will probably shoot it just like a pistol. And if you want a brace, you're gonna have to man up. The SB3 is amazing. I mean, it has a very short length of pull, of course, and it is mildly adjustable. It comes in FDE, black, and probably some other colorations. There's your wraparound brace right there for your arm. Nice rollover cheek piece. It locks in position. I'm going to tell you, it's worth the money. Yeah. Uh, the SBA3 is amazing. Ray turned me on to these uh, TMP friend, and he's like, yeah, you got to check out the SBA3, because I was complaining about this. Yeah. And uh, I'm running at 100 miles an hour all the time, so a couple years ago, I missed it. But now we're putting it on uh, all the pistols pretty much. Mill spec tube on this, uh, standard castle nut, we're going aft to forward. And then what will come on, <laughs> what will come on your gun is an A2 pistol grip. Again, that's a value, but workable pistol grip. <clears throat> Let's go back to the military operators with the M4 system, for instance. I still think they're running A2 in a six position yeah. adjustable stock. And I don't see the military going, oh, we need to upgrade to Magpul or whatever. Maybe special operations is, I don't know. Yeah, I think the guys that want to still accessorize and get some stuff on there if they so choose, but it's not like they're buying pallets full of Magpul grips to start tossing my ads on them. Exactly. So keep it, don't keep it. It's an A2 pistol grip, standard forged upper, standard forged uh, upper and lower. And then, let me see, I forgot to check the forge marking on that. I, that might be a Sarah forge on that. It's got the square. Yeah, I think that's Sarah. I'm just going off memory. So this is again mine. This is more basic. You're gonna have a flat value trigger guard in here. And so we have the Magpul enhanced in here. I still got mine. We have the standard horrible AR-15 uh, mil spec trigger, which was awful. We hated it. So you may swap that out. You may just stick with the option uh, whatever option you want. So this is a POF at this point. I got a bad lever on this sucker. And then I've got the anti walk pins on it as well that come with that kit actually. The POF trigger and again, a bad lever right there. But all that stuff you don't have to do and nor did we test it like that, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. We didn't test it. Uh, the standard charging handle is included. And in fact, I think this is it. So this is a standard charging handle that comes with it. And I don't know if I would recommend you would swap that out because getting back to philosophy of use, this is a short range weapon. Remember what I said, for me inside a hundred, definitely probably more like inside of 50 yards. That means you're gonna put a red dot, a reflex sight, an aim point on it, maybe a ACO or MRO or something like that. So you don't need to have a longer charging handle because we don't have a long telescopic sight sitting there. I think like a gas buster or something. Excellent point about that because with this seven and a half inch short AR-15 pistol direct gas system, you're going to get a lot of flush coming from that can. You get a lot of stink in your face, Holy <laughs> for sure. <laughs> you will, which going back to philosophy of use, uh, I do recommend always shooting a can. And by the way, I recommend if you do shoot that can, wear safety glasses. If you don't, you're gonna get particulates in your eyeballs. Voice of experience. 
TD, am I right or wrong? Sucks, yeah. We were in the desert, and we've shot, like, short-barreled rifles, direct gas stuff, and if you don't wear glasses, you're going to get all types of crap blown into your eyeballs. So, getting back to the fact that maybe the 7.5-inch, maybe 10.5-inch AR-15 pistols are not the best overall choice in the world. You're going to have to have a can, says me, and you're going to have to always wear safety glasses. Thank you. Thank you. So in your defensive encounter, have fun with that. Back to features. Talked about the trigger. You don't have to swap it out. It's standard mil spec. Here's your out of the box, pretty excellent Midwest Industries handguard on your Delton Lima AR-15 pistol. It is M-Lock compatible and we like it and we will never swap it out. I think it's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Look how narrow and profile it is. Oh, that's the part where we differ. You want it to be a little bit fatter than that? I will say this much. When you shoot a lot, <laughs> this son of a bitch gets very hot. <laughs> it burn your hands. It's not very comfortable. Even with gloves, if you put a couple hundred rounds down range, you will not have a good time. Perhaps <laughs> last generation's Lima pistol with the Samson rail had a little more space under the rail and the barrel. <laughs> Oh, you cracked me up. I can say any mean thing I want to. In that well, point. you bring up a really good point. The previous generation, according to our understanding of the Lima pistol, they did have a Samson Evolution 6.5 yeah. key mod. There might have been some more air. Yeah. We did notice while shooting this, and we did shoot it, we rapid fired it and everything, uh, it got smoking hot. Uh, but legally, you cannot put on a VG on this thing. It is a pistol. You guys know how that is. But we sure wishing we had one. Yeah. Man, it got hot. Awesome. It, and it's what I've always said. You don't need to go full auto to get your gun smoking hot. Uh, we're going to show you like footage of our Gym Tech Halo GMT melting the snow afterwards. <laughs> TD touched his hands to it and melted his glove on it. Yeah. We should have put one of our suppressor covers on it, but we were in a hurry that day. We're always in a hurry. Pretty much always. But great handguard. Uh, the big differences like you brought up our uh, handguard length. So you might say, well, that's too short for me. And I completely understand guys who would say that. Yeah. They say, hey, that's too short of a handguard. I'd rather have, uh, and I'm talking, if you want to go with an out of the box AR-15 pistol, the Lima in this configuration may not work for you. But a lot of guys would like this increased length for both grasping and for more safety. Maybe you don't want to put your hand up towards the muzzle like that. Again, safety device right here. Increased length. What does the Swedish chef say? More length is more fun in most people's book. <laughs> okay, so that's a handguard. What were you going to say? Just, it, it is tempting if you're firing one of these pistols to really choke forward and get more control over it. But the closer you get, keep in mind with an A2 flash hider, ends about here. You're getting your hand just a little too close there. Be very, very careful. Safety tip from the Nut and Fancy Project to you that you do not blow your fingers off. It is a whole different ball game shooting these guns. And you can get like uh, distracted. You can get under, uh, get in a high stress environment where you just forget shooting. It's really easy. Guys have done it before. Yeah. So again, uh, be super careful. That's the handguard as we see it. On to the barrel of the Delton AR-15 Lima pistol. It is mid contour. Mid contour. 7.5 inches in length. 7.5 inches. Direct gas Direct impingement. Direct gas impingement. <laughs> Chrome lined. Chrome lined. <laughs> uh, and A2 birdcage. A2 birdcage. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so much fun to this do. This is a fun review. Yeah, so I don't know uh, the composition specifically. The website says... I want to say it's 4150. Hold on, I just want to hear the chef say this. It's chrome vanadium. Chrome vanadium. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's 4140, 4150, whatever. We'll look at the accuracy that always drives to barrel quality. Again, it's chrome lined. Chrome lined. <laughs> uh, we talked about the birdcage already, and I think that is features. Again, it comes like a normal AR pistol. Yeah. Normal AR-15. If you want to swap stuff out, you can. I will say that in our testing phase of the Lima pistol, we ran it pretty much other than putting just a cheesy rubber brace on it. This one right here, where'd it go? We ran it stock. Yeah. True. We threw totally. a, we threw a red dot on it, stock trigger. Um, didn't change anything out. We put a can on it, so you don't have to do any of that stuff on the Delton Lima pistol. 
on to how the Lima pistol shot Tactical Doodle. Did you like it? I found it both rewarding and pleasing as a shooting experience. <laughs> this voice is racist towards not only the Swedes, but puppets as well. Looks cool. <laughs> We're just having a good time in the bunker, boys. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, yeah, it was pleasant to shoot. As long as it is suppressed. <laughs> as long as it is suppressed. Uh, yeah, with a can on it, it's awesome. Even in the indoor range with the GMT on it, the Halo, doable. But I'll tell you what, you still got a flamethrower. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of unburnt powder coming out. Didn't we catch it on fire, by the way? Yeah, we totally so caught it. So in the fire. indoor range, I was rapid firing it and we looked down and the actual muzzle of the Lima pistol with this can on it was on fire. I thought I had touched it to the carpet, you know, on the shooting yeah. stage, but that was not the case. For whatever reason, the can caught on fire and it is still loud. Don't think you can shoot it without hearing protection, but it's 200% better, maybe a thousand percent better than shooting it uncorked. So how did it shoot? Outstandingly with a suppressor on it, right, Chef? Yeah. He'll come back, trust it me. Was <laughs> it was radical. But that's because the, the 7.5 inch barrel without a suppressor makes less sense than going to like a 10 inch or something. We want this compact package but without this, as I shoot mine, since I don't have a suppressor, it's, I guess, cute if you're one of the recoil folks that really like the, you know, if you like the sound and the noise and that kind of thing. I, I get And some it, guys are into it. I get it. Yeah. But that's an important point I forgot in philosophy of use. By going to a 7.5, another advantage, I totally forgot it, was if you do can up, it's still a short overall package. So if you go with a 10 and a half AR pistol, then you can it up, duh. Now, you, now you're at the overall length of a 16 inch carbine. Yeah. Okay. Reliability, 100%. I don't remember of any problems, even with a can on it. We did lube it before we shot it. We took it out to the desert. It survived the curse of the desert and cold snowy conditions. The Delton did great. We didn't no, notice any rotation of the gas block, any misalignment of the gas tube. I just, nothing. I mean, Oops. and w how many rounds did we shoot? I would say I ballpark it, you know, not a ton, but probably six, seven hundred rounds shot through these two guns. This one did the predominance of the shooting right here, and it canned up too. So, and I'm talking steel cased, brass case ammo. It chugged them all. Where's that magazine? This, the stock magazine by CPD Industries. That sounds like a sexually transmitted disease, CPD. But it comes with one of these GI type magazines, and it ran well too. Yeah. So we loaded it up. It's fine. We heard some rumors that hey, we're having problems with, with these magazines. The gun shops told us didn't see that at all. That's it that's what great. was crazy. We got the four hundred dollar AR pistol, and yeah. we expected issues because nothing really comes that cheap without coming some right flaws with it but yeah by the way this is td's work he fills paint fills the markings in on the receiver so if you're wondering where that came from he's buying paint pens and he does that work himself and instantly going back to how it shot we use all types of magazines gis yeah magpuls magpuls uh, uh these ones here the lancers all 100 percent uh, and it was way fun, really, really fun. And that's before we put any mods into it at all. And here's your paper on the accuracy. Time for a megaphone. If you're gonna go buy a 7.5 inch AR-15 pistol, a 10 and a half inch or whatever short barreled AR-15 pistol, I would not expect it to be totally accurate. This is what we got, show it to him. Now that's actually pretty good, so yeah. that's, what is that, 50 yards, 25 yards. So that's just an indoor range after initial sight in. Like I said, it's a short range gun. We know that. Know this. Uh, that's the wrong one. Uh, as the distances you know, increase, it's gonna spread out a little bit. There's another 25 yard target. I thought I have, I thought I had another one. Is it because it's chrome lined? Chrome lining will uh, not be as consistent. But that's not usually manifest in my shooting until you go to longer ranges, like 300, 200 plus yards, and you kind of see it. And that's with a really good ammo. Most shooters would never know the di difference. Accuracy-wise, says me, between a chrome-lined, melanite-lined, stainless steel barrel because of the human factor, says I. That's 25 yards. And then I have some notes here. Gym Tech Halo gets hot, 100%. Probably me hurrying, I said. So these are my loads here. 
And then I don't know where our paper went at 50 yards. I kind of lost a chunk of them. Um, Did you really? I, oh, I think I we have that. video of it though, right? Yeah, we so, got the video. Now keep in mind, uh, we did not shoot this with a scope. We only shot it with red dot. I did my best at 50 yards, but I, I want to say the group was about like that. Does that sound right? Yeah, it, it wasn't, wasn't phenomenal. Yeah. And that's running uh, a variety of loads, AE223, FMJs. Uh, I'm not going to waste 77 or 75 grain match loads in it. It's kind of stupid. I would love to see someone do a long range build of their little 7.5 inch pistol. And they're like, yeah, dude, because with, you know, you're already compromising with the brace. You don't mm -hmm. have a full on stock. I wouldn't say I wouldn't put a scope on it. I mean, on this again, we're running the Weaver 800364 1 to 6 power illuminated. But it goes down to one power, so for CQB, it's a smart choice. But getting to the chef's point, putting a very big, long scope on these short AR-15 pistols doesn't make a lot of sense. Now, for accuracy, what I may do, either as an additional Patreon exclusive or maybe on the V channel, depends on how much this is watched and shared and thumbs up and all that good stuff, I will take out these pistols with a scope and maybe do a 100-yard exercise with yeah. it. It might be a barricade thing where uh, if you guys want that, let me know, and then I'll tell you what they do at 100 yards. We wanted to rush this one to press, show you what we come up with. So I, from what I saw, accuracy is good, not excellent. Would you agree with that? Yeah, it's as far as more accurate rifles in the AR series go, it's not that impressive. Just remember, it costs $400. That's the thing. It wouldn't That's be the price of some AR-15 barrels yeah. or uppers. So that's yeah. it for the price paid, for the realistic philosophy of use, yeah. bunker clap. We don't call it a golf clap anymore. It's called a bunker clap. So we're going to give it overall how to shoot, reliability, curse of the desert. We're going to give it five stars. I, didn't, I don't really have any other reason to say otherwise. We did click around on the interweb and we saw some guys complaining about certain things of the Lima pistols, what they say? Yeah, before I bought mine for that price, which was still, by the way, awesome, I had done a little bit of research and, and I tend to not wait unfavorable reviews on sites as much sometimes because I think the happy people that bought Delton Limas are too busy shooting them to go and post about perhaps having a repair issue. It did sound like their customer service is great. If you do have something wrong, uh, I don't know if Delton is much, much better or much, much worse than any other manufacturer. Right. We've had plenty of guns come through the door that didn't work for one reason or another, and we had to send them off. It doesn't seem to just be confined to the lower price. Every brands. manufacturer has had problems. Yeah. Just I, about. I expected since I was... Including Ruger. Yeah, I was looking to, I was thinking, well, if nothing else, it's a project and maybe I can fiddle with it a little bit. And I haven't really had to. On to competitive options. Uh, and we're going to look at this kind of philosophically. So we're talking about a short, short AR-15 pistol, seven and a half inch. I'll throw in 10 inch in, in there as well. What other guns would you buy or at least consider in a realistic defensive or weapon philosophy of use? Uh, one I would say is, an AK underfolder. Now, this is not going to have the same overall form factor because we have a folded stock. It's going to take you time and effort a little bit to unfold it, nor does it have the modularity and, you know, pick a tiny capabilities of an AR-15. But overall length between these two systems, at least with a can, is almost identical. So AK underfolder says me. This is a Blackheart Industries discontinued AK-63D. That's an awesome AK, by the way. Yeah, it totally is. Awesome, awesome. I love, 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 love this gun. Another great competitive option would be, ladies and gentlemen of the bunker, the Caltech SU-16C bunker clap. Highly proven in the Nut Fancy project. I think that has a Lantec muzzle brake on it now. That's also a sound for type there. We've had this in the project forever. It's reliable. Can you pump thousands and thousands of rounds to your SU-16s without problems? Probably not. It's not designed for that. But look at the short overall length and you don't have any ballistic disadvantage with this thing. It's a 16 inch barrel. It folds into about the same form factor as your AR-15 pistol. I mean, I've always been advocating this. Granted, this one has a can on it. But like I said, that that's part of my system philosophy running this pistol. It's like integral. And then running along, how about, ooh, we haven't seen this for a while. The Tavor Bullpup. Check this one out. Not seen in TMP for a long time. How's the weight difference on this tactical doodle? 
It's a bit heavier. How would the chef rate the weight difference? It is one heavy son bitch. <laughs> <laughs> now, we do have, of course, an EOTech on this, an old-fashioned lighting system on this, and I think that is an M4SD. Yeah, that's uh, a Griffin comp, if I remember yeah, right. Yeah, Griffin comp, and actually I think that is compatible with the Halo GMT. Incidentally, a sharp-eyed Patreon member when I was canning up, that one I was trying to put on the GMT on a coded A2 uh, compatible as an M4. And he's like, hey, it's the coding will prevent that GMT can going on because it's that tight in tolerances. And you're absolutely right. Good catch. Good catch. So this is heavier, but it's a bullpup. Ballistically, it's superior. Great form factor. We've talked and reviewed about the Tabor uh, so many times. Uh, which one would you prefer between these two? Doodle. Uh, probably... It's your go-to-war option. These are the only two options I want to give you. Which one? Tavor. Nice Just choice. Ooh, he swapped that up. In the ergo, yeah, it it's combines freaking thread. Freaking awesome. Yeah, uh, TD put this rail on here and the VG on it. And you can't put a VG on this because even though it's yeah. the same overall length, it is still considered a rifle or a carbine. Yeah. I mean, look at this, though. Without a can, let me go this way right here in the bunker. Again, that freaking Lima pistol is very short overall length. But I don't feel compelled to put a can on this. Yeah. It's awesome when it I is. I would love to. We did a lot of shooting like that. Yeah, and that's a piston-driven gun. And I think that will wrap it up for competitive options because we want to wrap this video up. Oh, and there's TD modeling there's your, the arm brace. Your POU for the, the uh, brace. Huh. And the rubber bands are actually included with your Lima pistol. That's kind of cool. Yeah, it's yeah, kind of nice. Two rubber bands. Two whole rubber bands. It's kind of like the movie Inception to make sure you're not in a dream, apparently. Yeah. I feel like I'm in a dream with this bunker review, nothing. Wrap it up. Okay, appreciate that. So, in summary, the Delton Lima AR-15 pistol was completely excellent for $400. Completely. Totally reliable, adequately accurate, very small compact form factor with a suppressor or a sound forward directing muzzle device. Really super fun to shoot. Highly, highly recommended. Now, would I necessarily recommend it over any other brand of AR-15 pistol? No. Palmetto State Armory is awesome. All the other brands we talked about, I'm sure, mostly are awesome. The thing that really attracts me about this particular point in time, this particular pistol, is its high value. That, heck, you can get in the AR-15 pistol game and just start experimenting with everything we've talked about for $400. You don't have to change anything. Again, the brace is an issue. You're gonna have to put something back here if you want to shoulder it. Totally legal, by the way, totally legal. Uh, there you go. It is completely awesome. What does the chef say on the outro? It is pretty cool, but if you are looking for your first AR-15, I would recommend going with something a little bit longer than the <laughs> seven and a half inches, perhaps a 10.5 if you demand the pistol. Agreed. Uh, my go to war option, dudes, is not going to be an AR pistol. There's no way. I've always said it. It's going to be a standard carbine, 16 inch barrel with an 18 inch SPR upper to pin on if and when I need that ballistic advantage. I mean, this is my option right here. But it sure is fun having as a cast member in inventory. What a great gun, Delton. We're gonna outro with a complete bunker clap. Here we go. Thanks for tuning in, thanks for subbing, thanks for keeping TMP going after all these years. Ladies and gentlemen, see you later.